The other half to the what is aquaponics formula that we looked at previously is hydroponics, which is soilless crop production. There are a number of key benefits to soilless growing operations. Firstly, when we remove the soil from a growing environment, we decrease many of the risks associated with soil-borne bacterial and fungal diseases and pathogens. Many bacterial and fungal infections that plague plants come from the soil in which they're grown, or use the soil in which the plants are grown as part of their life stages and development. By removing the soil from the growing environment, we remove a large number of bacterial and fungal diseases that might impact our plant production. Removing the soil from a growing environment also mitigates the risk of warm-blooded animal diseases, such as E. coli. This is because we're not using things like warm-blooded animal manures, like cow manure or chicken manure, in order to cultivate the crops. In a similar fashion to decreasing soil-borne bacterial and fungal diseases, removing the soil from the growing environment decreases incidences of pests that depend on soil for development. Many agricultural pests depend on a soil environment in order to pupate, or at least to utilize in one of their life stages. By removing the soil substrate from the growing environment, we knock back a lot of these pests and the problems that these pests bring with them. In hydroponic environments, we gain a lot of operational efficiencies, particularly related to planting, transplanting, treatment of the plants, and harvesting. One of the biggest operational efficiencies that we gain is the lack of lag time between harvested plants and new seedling growth. In soil production, if we were to harvest a long row of lettuce, we would harvest that lettuce, we'd clean up the row, we'd till the soil, we'd amend the soil, we'd reset the row, and then we would start the plants from seed once again. In a hydroponic environment, given a proper crop rotation, we can harvest adult heads from growing sites in a piece of growing equipment and back transplant those same sites the same day with young seedlings. This drastically cuts down on the downtime of plant sites and increases the overall crop rotations that we can produce per year. Additionally, hydroponic and controlled environment agricultural techniques allow for significant environmental control. This means that we can control things like the lighting, the humidity, the temperature of the growing environment, all tailored to the types of crop that we're growing, maximizing the growth rates of those crops. This removes things like seasonal fluctuations in crop production and dead time or downtime in winter months. We can control things like the ambient temperature of the growing space, where the vegetative portion of the plant is, the relative humidity of that air, which can impact things like fruit development, controlling nutrient deficiencies, mitigating fungal infections. And we can even control things like the root temperature by controlling the temperature of the nutrients being delivered to the plants. Increasing the root temperature can allow for better root growth and overall plant health, nutrient uptake, and fruit development. Given the operational efficiencies gained, the environmental control that we have over the plant growth, and the economic use of space in hydroponic and aquaponic growing, we can see up to 35 times the productivity per square foot per year compared to conventional outdoor agricultural practices. Given that most hydroponic and aquaponic systems are recirculating, even though many hydroponic systems do require purging of the water periodically, hydroponic growing can produce crops with about 93% less water this is to say that it requires up to 93% less water to produce one pound of hydroponic produce than it would take to produce one pound of produce grown in an outdoor conventional agricultural setting. To really understand this water efficiency, it's important to remember that when crops are watered in outdoor environments, most of that water runs past the root system of the plant and ends up in the groundwater. In recirculating systems like recirculating aquaponic systems or hydroponic systems, when water is delivered to the plants, any water that the plant doesn't immediately uptake continues to flow through the system, is collected and recirculated back to the plants once again. This means that the only real loss of water from a hydroponic or aquaponic system is from evaporation off of the growing equipment, sumps, and tanks, and transpiration from the plants. 
one of the critical benefits of aquaponics over conventional hydroponics. And again, hydroponics, when we talk about hydroponics, yes, it includes all soilless types of growing. So aquaponics is technically a type of hydroponic growing. But in the industry, when we talk about hydroponics, in the context of types of growing, we typically see hydroponics as growing with nutrient salt inputs. So these are systems where you're batch mixing or buying in nutrients in order to dose into a sump or some sort of fertigation system in order for those nutrients to be delivered in a soluble liquid form to the roots of your plants. So that's what we're referring to when we talk about hydroponics. So one of the benefits to aquaponics over conventional chemical salt-based hydroponics is that it's significantly less dependent on nutrient inputs compared to hydroponic growing. So yes, in aquaponic environments and in aquaponic systems, we do use some chemical nutrient additives or nutrient salt additives. You'll see things like chelated iron frequently used inside of aquaponic systems. And in large commercial facilities, you might use a foliar spray of calcium or potassium or some other nutrient additive like that. But the base of the nutrients that's being used to drive plant growth in an aquaponic system comes from the waste produced by fish in fish tanks. Whereas in a conventional hydroponic system, all of the nutrients that are being provided to the plants for growth are coming from nutrient additives, either those chemical nutrient salts or some other nutrient input, not coming from the waste produced by the fish in fish tanks. This is an important thing to grasp, particularly when we're having a discussion about more sustainable ways to produce food. This was a turning point for my career personally, when I shifted from hydroponic research and hydroponic food production over to aquaponic food production. This change occurred for me when I was working on a project in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. At the site, there was a state-of-the-art, absolutely gorgeous, cutting-edge, chemical hydroponic facility. The problem was, during a time of political unrest, shipments in and out of Honduras stopped, which means that the system was unable to receive shipments of the chemical hydroponic salts and nutrients needed to sustain the plant growth. When looking at sustainable ag technologies for developing world applications or for sustainable development, or even in the context of broader sustainability as a whole, we wanna try and minimize outside inputs being put into the system or outside inputs that, if they're unavailable for a given period of time, can detrimentally impact the success and productivity of our system. It was funny that in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, at this site, right next to the hydroponic greenhouse, was a tilapia pond. And come hell or high water, whoever was in political power, regardless of shipping restrictions or the availability of nutrients coming into the country or coming into the site, the tilapia ate and they produced waste. And this was a real big turning point for me when I shifted my focus from conventional hydroponics, which depended on those nutrient inputs, over to aquaponics, where so long as we could keep a population of fish fed, we would have a continued local source of nutrients from which to grow crops.